Hey guys, and welcome back to the Vermilion Engine 4 tutorial. Today is just going to be a quick one, showing you how to speed up and slow down time in your game. So this is great for anything that you want, so it's commonly used in kind of city builder games like that. You might want to speed the game up so that you can progress further in the game, make more money, get more people to move in, stuff like that. But this can be used in absolutely whatever you like. So we're going to be speeding it up and speeding it down. So not only speeding it up down to normal, but also back to get slower. So let me show you what this is going to look like now. So we can walk around. If we press 1, nothing will happen because that's going to return us to a normal speed. If we press 2, we're going to go slightly faster. If we press 3, we're going to go even faster. And then we can go all the way back down to 1 normal speed like so. And if I press 0, we're going to slow down like this. And you can set up as many different levels as you want. So I have two fast ones, one slow down and a normal. You can have as many as you want. You don't have to have speeding up. You don't have to have speeding down. You can have whichever ones you like. And you can also change these values so you can make it go faster and you can make it go slower. Completely customizable for you and it's really easy and intuitive to use. So let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. Oh and again, just before that, if I press 1, I'll go back to normal speed like so. So now, let me show you how I've done it. So the first and only step we want to take is to open up our character blueprint. So for me this is going to be third person character, so that's content, third person BP, blueprints, third person character. But for you this could be third first or whatever you've named it. In here we just want to get some action mappings or keyboard events. I'm just going to be doing keyboard events but you can obviously create action mappings if you like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and get a one keyboard event like so and I'll get all the keyboard events first as well. So then I'm going to right click and get two keyboard event like so, right click get a three keyboard event and then I'll actually go above this as well and also right click and get a zero keyboard event and these are all the events I'm going to be using so we have slow down, normal speed, fast, even faster. Again, customize to get whatever you like. And you also don't need to use the numpad, you can use any button you want as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit plus variable here to create a new variable. And I'm going to call this one game speed like so. And we're going to change this to be a float. Compile, and then we're going to set this off of the pressed for these keyboard events like so. So I'm going to drag and drop the game speed onto pressed to set there. For zero, I want to slow it down, so I'm going to set this as a low number. Now one is the default game speed, so you want anything below one. I'm going to set this to be 0.3. Again, customize this for whatever you like. That's what we need to do there. We'll go down to one. Set game speed off of pressed. Again, one, I want to be the default value, and default is game speed of one. So set the value to one there. Two, I want to increase it just a little bit, so I'm going to set the game speed to two, so it's going to be twice as fast. And then three, I want to speed up even more. So this is kind of like the super fast speed. And this one, I'm going to set to five. Again, increase or decrease these as much as you like. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a timeline to kind of smoothly transition between them so it doesn't just snap. It does it nice and smoothly for us. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click, add a timeline like so. And I'm going to name this one change game speed T for timeline like that. And I'm going to double click this to open it up. In here I'm going to set the length to one second but you can set this to however long you want so this is just how long it's going to take to transition between them. So actually I'll make it two. So you can have this one, two, three, anything you like. This is just how fast it will do it. Then we're going to add a float track here like so and I'm going to name this one speed track like that. In here I'm going to right click add a key to curve float with time zero value of zero. Right click add another key with time of two and a value of one. You're going to want to make sure that the time is this length that you set up here so it's at the very end of your timeline. You can hit zoom to fit horizontal and vertical and see this line here. This is just going from our current speed all the way up to the speed that we want. So this can be slower or faster. We can close that timeline like so. Out of this, we want to right click and get a LURP and a LURP float there. Plugging the alpha into the speed track like that. A, so our starting value, we want this to just be the current speed of the game. So to do that we're going to be using the global time dilation. So we're going to right click, we're going to get global time dilation like so, plugging that into A there and this is going to get the current speed of the game. And then if we get game speed we can plug that into B. So B, the game speed, is the speed we want to go to. So A is our current speed, B is where we want to go. Now after the return value here we're going to drag off that and we're going to now set game, or sorry, set global time dilation like so, plugging that into the update of this timeline so it's going to smoothly transition between the current speed and the speed we want. That's all we need to do there, so now all we can simply do is open the components tab here, 
drag out our timeline name there, get that, drag out of this, and just hit play. And play from start if we want. And just plug that off of the set game speed we have there. And we're going to do that for all of the events that we have. So whenever we press one of these, it is going to play this timeline. And because we're doing play from start, even if you're halfway through a different one, when you press it again, it will restart back to the beginning with your current game speed and then go into the one we want. So even if the player spams this, go in between loads of different values, which some people like to do, just to have a look at it, see what it looks like. You know, this is not going to break. This will still work perfectly. And then I'm just going to duplicate these here to put them down here as well to get it working off of these nodes too. And that is it done for us. And if you want to play sound effects as well, all you do is just come off of the play from start, get a play sound 2D, and then here you can add whichever sound effects you like. So this one is slowing down. So you'd want to pick an asset which sounds like you're slowing down. So I'm just going to put click on button. This one, play sound 2D. This is going back to normal. So again, you just pick something which you'd like the sound of. So I'm not going to bother with setting those up now, but that's how you do it. You just play sound 2D after this and choose the sound effect which you like. So if we compile and save, we should see this working. So if we hit play, if I press 1, we got that sound effect and nothing else changed. That works. If I press 2, we're going to speed up a little bit like this. If I press 3, we're going even faster. You can see it's not snapping. It is slowly transitioning between them. If I press 2, we'll go slower. Press 1, all the way back to the beginning, and it played the sound effect again like so. Now if I press 0, it's played that sound effect, and we slowed down. Now it's only playing the sound effect on 0 and 1, because they're the only ones I set it up on, just to give you an example and show you. But as you can see, this is working perfectly for us. We can increase and decrease the speed perfectly like so. So I think that'll be it for this video. We've done everything we want to do. We've created a system in which we can speed up and slow down the game to get it perfect for the player and how they want, which again is perfect in loads of different games that you might see, loads of different genres. And we can also set up sound effects on here as well to get it perfect for us. And again, fully customizable for how many different tiers you want and the different speeds you'd like as well. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.